I've been working on this feature, uh, a file name encoding with uh, Go to, in to implement support for case insensitiveness. Uh, on some file systems, my first effort has been on EXD4. And this is a feature that has been requested many, many times. Uh, there has been discussions on this for a long time. I believe that uh, right before me in 2016, Ted made a proposal to implement this on EXD4. Before that, we have some proposal to implement it on the XFS in 2014. I've seen discussions of this in 2008. Uh, uh, the oldest discussion I saw was in 2002, I think. Uh, but I'm pretty sure people were discussing about this way before that. And uh, the reason why it hasn't moved forward is one, it's a bit tricky to get it right. There are many, many corner, corner cases. Uh, but I believe we have come to to an implementation that is close to uh, solve most of these corner cases now. Uh, sure, go ahead. Is, is, is XFS is it already uh, incorporated? Yes, yes. Sorry, in XFS you have uh, you have an implementation that uh, at M MKFS time you are able to select if you want your disk to be case insensitive or not, this is going to apply this white, and uh, I believe it's so is ASCII only, right? You don't have support for other encodings, if I'm correct. Uh, the proposal I mentioned in 2014, I'm sorry, was a proposal to implement full UTF-8 uh, normalization and case folding support. Uh, so why an encoding aware file system? Well, traditional Unix file systems have always uh, relied on the um, on the assumption that file names are opaque by sequences, so are, they are simply uh, car strings, null terminated, any file, any uh, set of characters is a valid file name if you don't have a slash or if it's not the new character in the middle. Uh, but, but why do we wanna do this now? Uh, because other people have, are doing this and have been doing this for, for a very long time. Windows has it. Apple had it on their previous file system and now in the, their APFS file system they also support it. And because there are real world use cases for this. Uh, mainly porting stuff, bringing stuff from the Windows world. Uh, Android also exposes uh, some case insensitive interface. And uh, as a result of this work, we can also offer a way better support for exported file systems that are coming from those worlds. And uh, at least I believe in the Android case, they work with a user space hack. Uh, I'm not sure if it's used, but uh, there, are, there are always problems with user space hacks in this approach. They are usually slow, they have a, a severe performance hit, and they uh, have to deal with many, many race conditions. Um, what the best example that interests me on why we should be doing encoding file systems is that it's, it's, a, it's a better way to expose this to users. Uh, we have an understanding that file, file names are unique, and they are uh, inside the same directory, but the uniqueness we are talking about does not translate well to real world languages. So despite all these four files being unique in a byte uh, sense, uh, when, it they, when it gets rendered into any um, program to display files, uh, you can actually see, you cannot actually see any difference between them. Uh, if you look at the I know numbers, uh, you can verify that those are different files, but they, show they all have the same name when rendered. And the reason for that is that each of these files were created with a slightly different uh, equivalent version of the same uh, string using a, a, a UTF-8 decomposition and composition techniques. So in a file system that is encoding aware, we should be able to consider those all the same files, which is clearer for the user, it's more obvious, and gives a, the user an easy way to, to figure out which file he's looking for. Uh, this is particularly true when you're talking about non-English speakers, because uh, on for the English uh, language, you don't have any uh, normalization issues that I can think of that are gonna result in this situation if you think of the lower ASCII uh, character set. But 
we are working with people from all around the world, so it's more than fair that we have a good support for everyone. And another reason of why I want to do uh, encoding inside the file system is that I'm really interested in case insensitiveness, in the ability to look for a file regardless of the case, and I have a real hard time defining what case is if you don't have an encoding. Mm -hmm. So if you are considering simply a byte sequence, what is uppercase and lowercase? That, that's meaningless. So for all uh, string case compare operations, you need to have a definition of what that byte sequence is. And that's why I want to implement encoding before uh, putting uh, case insensitiveness there. So there is already uh, an effort in the kernel to handle uh, character encoding. It's the NLS, native language support. It, lies, uh, it exists inside the file system directly in the kernel. But uh, it's a bit limited when it, it comes short when you're doing, doing anything more complex with encodings or when you're supporting uh, different cases. Uh, it has trouble with dealing with invalid character sequences. So what happens when you ask the NLS to convert a uh, character that's not mapped in that, uh, in that uh, character set. Well, primarily it will just uh, return zero on some cases, on other it won't. So you have uh, an inconsistent behavior there. It's also completely uh, incapable of dealing with multi-byte uh, character sequences, which is uh, the, biggest, the largest part of the UTF-8 specification. So uh, if you try to use uh, the two upper function to return the uppercase of, uh, of a character, if, it, if the uppercase version is, has more than one byte, it's not gonna work. Uh, it also has trouble dealing with, it has no support at all for dealing with encoding evolution over time. Uh, it's not uh, a big problem for uh, UTF-8 in a sense that UTF-8 promises that's gonna be stable uh, the transformations, both normalization and case folding, is going to be stable over time, but it's not stable when you're talking about unmapped code points. So if in a specific release of Unicode you have uh, a code point that is not defined, uh, and then you have the file system assuming that it, uh, it only normalizes and uh, it only decomposes and folds to itself, in, a for in, a in, the next and in the next version of Unicode, it it actually gets assigned and it starts to case folding, then you have a change in behavior, and this is not acceptable for us. So we need a mechanism, uh, we need NLS to be able to deal with not only with encodings, but with specific encoding versions of each character set. Uh, it's also missing normalization support uh, for everything. There is no normalization support, and it's partially, uh, it has partially implemented case folding. So what we have now is basically case folding for ASCII, and if you look at the other uh, character tables, it doesn't do uh, case folding at all. So the improvements I'm proposing, and they are all already in the mailing list. There is a previous version that went to FSDevel, and now I'm working on this more on Linux ext4 mailing list. I'm proposing uh, an interface where we can where the user can, uh, can request a specific version of the encoding. For instance, I want to request UTF-8 version 10.0, and then NLS will load the exact uh, table that matter for us uh, with the unmapped code points, and then we have uh, stability among different versions. Uh, we also want the file system to specify some behavior of the NLS. In particular, it wants to be able to declare, I want uh, a specific type of normalization, like I want NFKD, uh, it has to be able to request one type of case folding, and uh, this is uh, particularly important uh, for file systems because we want to make sure that we that we always store in the super block <coughs> what exactly has been used to create hashes inside the file system, what is the exact version we use, so we can retrieve the information later during lookups. Uh, we also uh, we also implemented a mechanism in NLS to validate sequences and correctly handle them when they are invalid and allow the file system to specify what it wants from the NLS, whether it should be rejecting the, the string, an invalid string, whether it should try to 
normalize, uh, do a best effort to normalize the string or whether it should just return the plain string uh, that is invalid. Uh, the extension to the API also starts to consider multi-byte code points. So we have a new API for comparison, uh, which requires, for instance, ability to handle uh, two different length strings that actually are equivalent strings, so they should compare to the same stuff. Uh, it also uh, implements feature for norm, uh, it also uh, provides interfaces for normalization and case folding directly to the, to the file system because it's gonna have to use that for hashing. Uh, this implementation, uh, the patches I'm proposing also include a full UTF-8 and FKD uh, normalization algorithm. It doesn't use tables, it creates, uh, it's based on the, an implementation from SGI in 2014. Uh, it creates a, a digital tree of the UTF-8 specification based on uh, um, the UCD files provided by the Unicode specification and we add a script inside the kernel to generate the the tree in a header file and add that to the tree and compile it uh, during the kernel build time. The tree itself is quite large and I think it, it gets to around uh, 90 kilobytes now, but this goes inside a module that is only loaded on demand. We make sure to provide UTF-8 without normalization uh, under the f uh, load and the last flags uh, if you request UTF-8 without normalization, you don't need to even load the digital tree into the kernel. Uh, this is also extendable for other normalization types. We are using NFKD because that implementation was available already because of the work from the SGI guys in 2014. But if we decide to one day support a file system like APFS, the Apple file system in the Linux kernel, which I believe uses NFD, if I'm not mistaken, uh, then we can simply extend the UTF-8 to, to support that in a, in a separated module. I also made sure to, to make all these transformations to the NLS API to be ca backwards compatible with all the existing code, uh, all the existing chart sets in the in NLS and not implementing normalization and code folding for them, I hope. Uh, but still, uh, the old API is still there and still compatible and all the users that need it uh, still got them there. So the API looks a bit like this. You have, it's a very, very uh, high level API and providing uh, a string comparison and string case comparison instead of two upper and two lower because we need, uh, because this can abstract all the multi-byte handling stuff. Uh, we also need to, a mechanism just to validate it in case that we want to reject uh, strings at, uh, at file creation time inside the file system. Uh, and like I mentioned, the normalization and the case fold interfaces, they are important because they are gonna be used for, uh, th they're gonna be directly used for hashing both in the Dentry cache and in the, and in the file system. Uh, so using this interface I just, uh, I just pr uh, mentioned, uh, there, there is also an implementation to make ext4 encoding aware and uh, case unaware. And the patches for both the for all the kernel E2FS progs and XFS tests, uh, they are under review now on the mailing list. Uh, I think I haven't submitted the XFS test, but I linked the, a branch there. Uh, this has gone through a few iterations. Uh, if you guys were at LSFNM, you understand that this is a very different proposal from what I did there, and it's uh, way closer to, uh, I believe, your test proposal in from 2015. Um, so, well, the patches are there. I have a question uh, you haven't mentioned, but uh, is it the implementation in ext4, is it case preserving? Uh, yes. Like yes. NTFS, or is it yes, it's case, case insensitive like FAT? No, it's case preserving. Preserving. Uh, we always preserve what gets written in the disk. It's name preserving, absolutely. Yeah, uh, so this, implement, this is implemented as an incompatible feature because we have to change uh, hashes in the disk. So once your disk goes, oh. uh, goes encoding aware, it, has, it cannot go encoding unaware in an online fashion. We have to, what I'm proposing now is to do this at, uh, 
file system creation time and apply it disk twice. We store the encoding information, the flags information in the super block and keep it there. So um, <coughs> just on a, I might have missed this, but how do we ensure the coding that the user's using matches the encoding that the file system's using? Because that's where we're going to get all of the problems. Like we share one ext4 file system among a lot of containers, but the containers are free to set their encoding to anything they want. <coughs> right. Uh, this is actually one of the points I'm raising at the end. The uh, question: oh, okay. uh, How do we handle with no? Sorry, how do we handle to with user space breakage? Uh, so my uh, my goal with this is to support uh, a specific set of programs that are interested in the case insensitiveness. So the way I see this feature being applied is in a separate file system that actually meets this. I don't think uh, uh, we will see this applied as an uh, entire root of uh, root of S, uh, being used in a root of S. So this should be used for people who actually have a need for this feature. Okay, but basically we won't know what breaks until people try it. Uh, yeah. So I was trying to think, like, what would be the most common cases? It's probably an Android case that you're <coughs> thinking of, but the you know the most common cases, you know, I got in my backpack, you know, a USB stick that's fat, and anything that can be done. That's the most common probably case. In, uh, case insensitive case. <coughs> the second most common is probably all the Mac users and Windows users coming through Samba. Um, so, you know, all those guys that are accessing their little appliances at home, those little NATs that are including some downloading drivers, whatever. So, in that case, they'd have to format. So, the appliance just formats it, exj4, and you know, Samba gets to turn off some really, really expensive user space code. Okay, my <coughs> my main use case for this is on SteamOS. Uh, we need, we want to provide a better interface for uh, a better uh, environment for game producers bring, bringing games from Windows. So what we are doing there, uh, we are probably creating a separate partition to keep games on, mm -hmm. to keep the game data on, and that partition is going to be uh, encoding aware and, and have uh, case insensitiveness in, in specific directories. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a very similar case to what we're talking about, right, is that you've got a root file system mm -hmm. on some NAT or some appliance, and you're exporting to your Macs and your Windows some other ext4 partition, and now you get to turn off all this really ugly code. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that at this point we're making a couple assumptions here. Uh, uh, one of the primary assumptions is that the primary users will be either things like the game use case or the file server use case. Uh, where you're trying to support Samba, SIFs, uh, NFSB4, something like that. Another key assumption that's being made with all of this is um, all the world is UTF-8. Um, there is zero interest, as far as I know, of anyone who wants to have, you know, one person's home directory using, you know, CP1337 and another one using some other random Windows uh, code set. Uh, and doing anything else would be hugely complicated uh, and you know anyone who's really interested is invited to send patches but that's not I think the focus of any of the interests that I've certainly seen uh, and if I'm wrong in that assumption you know I, I invite to be corrected <laughs> I mean, you have all you could do it. I mean, you could go through another translation which says, I'm storing an AT UTF-8 of this version, and this is the, the on disk, and then whatever interface you want from me, you go through the tables to translate them. One of the problems with this is how have we communicated to all the user space people that we're choosing UTF-8 as our canonical representation? Because right at the moment, a lot of European distributions like that ISO single character format for that. So there is still not a lot of agreement that UTF-8 is the way to go. And the Chinese particularly hate it because it's all four characters for instead of two for their 
representation. So what steps are we making to ensure that reality matches our choice? <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said, I think right now the primary use case that has been imagined has been fairly, uh, you know, almost more like appliance style use cases where you have a tuned uh, user space. Um, I think uh, to date, like many other kernel features, uh, there's been a very strong somebody else's problem field erected, and it's like we're throwing that problem to the distros. Um, so <laughs> I'll be honest, that's where we are right now. Um, yeah, I, I unfortunately part of the problem is POSIX doesn't have a good way for the file system to communicate um, or some way of you know making it glibc's problem, right? So we could easily say, you know, the file system encoding is UTF-8, we'll make it glibc's problem or, you know, some library's problem to transcode from, you know, some character set into the native character set of that file system. Um, I think that's a fascinating research problem. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time to try to address it, but yeah, we don't have a good solution right now. <laughs> Did you at least address that, that the kernel, the file system has a, 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 a standard way to, to uh, expose, this is my, wh whatever you go through me, this is the format. And the, and the case insensitives and, the, and the, at least some kind of way of, say, of exporting, you do whatever you want, but... S s an application, a, a smart application, can go and say, okay, did you actually format with the right from uh, bits, and can I rely on this and this and that? So uh, uh, just a simple table, I control, I don't know how, Sisyphus, that says it doesn't matter which is the file system implemented, but this is the encoding you get from me, and the, compa and the string compare you get from me. This so, so I think the answer is right now, no. Uh, there is a super block flag because the file system needs to know. Um, I would think the right place to put that would be uh, something that shows up in statfs because um, that would actually be a much more sane place to put it. We could very easily implement an ioctal or a sysfs uh, field. Um, there may be a sysfs field, I can't remember. But you know, we could very easily do that. That's not a very friendly way of exporting the information. Um, doing something in StatFS will require a more extended conversation um, with FSDevel and Linux API to try to find space in an existing interface to make that available. Um, but it's an interesting idea. So, other questions? Uh, I think about the XFS case where they. Uh, they expose the entire file system as case insensitive and assumes uh, some ASCII conversion. Uh, is it exposed anywhere? Is there any XFS? How, how do they handle this? This might be a... So let me just move forward and then we can continue. Uh, this implementation occurs, uh, sorry, the, this conversion occurs at the moment only a, at uh, file creation time uh, because it would require rebuilding the H3 hashes in the disk. This is a name-preserving name implementation. And we are, uh, this is being done at the moment entirely inside the, the ext4. We are not touching anything at the VFS. Uh, the way we are we are trying to make good use of the entry cache, so we we are caching positive entries there. We make sure there is only one entry that that gets gets cached per file entry. Uh, the actual name that gets cached, uh, it uh, I can tell that it doesn't uh, really matter at the moment. It's going to be the the first access by the user, but since we have the hash and the compare done. Uh, in an encoding aware or a case insensitive fashion, uh, we are able to always retrieve that entry. We're not ne caching negative entries at the moment because it would, 
it would require uh, some careful invalidation so you don't uh, leak the previous negative name into into the new positive entry in case they have different casing and stuff because we want to be name preserving. Uh, so for the casing sensitive support, we're really interested in having a more fine-grained control. So it obviously requires encoding support because otherwise, what is the case fold operation? Uh, we are doing it as a per directory, per directory I know the attribute. You can only configure it on empty directories so you don't have to re rehash uh, things and you avoid name collisions. Name collisions would be uh, two files, two different files that uh, are equivalent only in a casing sensitive fashion, which means they only differ by casing. <laughs> and we believe that this finer grain control uh, of doing it per directory is more suitable for users uh, is a, a better use case. Uh, and this becomes quite super trivial to implement. Uh, the casing sensitive support becomes trivial to implement once you have encoding support because it can be seen as just um, a special case of encoding. It's like, uh, okay, now I have a larger set of equivalent sequences. Uh, I have to mention that uh, if you could, if you would create uh, a NASCII file system, uh, Set, it, set the encoding to ask instead of uh, not setting at all. Don't enable strict mode. Uh, you can make use of the case fold feature. You're not gonna have normalization, so you don't need to, to care about that. There's not gonna be any collisions. You can make use of the casing sensitive support per directory and not, even though you apply the encoding aware for your root FS. It, you can make use of just this feature. The result is gonna be the same. And uh, the amount of code that gets added is, is, is almost nothing. Uh, there are a few limitations in the current implementation. The first one I mentioned is the negative the entries. Uh, I'm still not supporting directory encryption, uh, FS script, because the lookup is based on the hash of the name, which is created based on the name that was, uh, that was first used to access. And it's impossible to recalculate that hash using an equivalent sequence. So what I'm proposing is that we change the hash that we write, the, the hash of the file name that we store on encrypted volumes to use the normalization version to calculate the hash. My question is, does it work? Is there, does anyone see a problem with that? Okay. Uh, there are small details like if a script and it's the entry ops, but uh, this is just a, uh, code uh, leveraging. Uh, uh, my question is also uh, uh, regarding how to deal with invalid sequences. This is uh, an ext4 policy. Uh, what do we do when the file system faces an invalid character sequence? My understanding is that we should make it permissive, so we accept invalid sequences <laughs> and treat them as opaque byte sequences, uh, which would uh, basically mean we fall back to the previous behavior. Um, any disagreement? We made ava we make available strict mode, but I don't see why you'd want to to enable that ever. And finally, uh, the topic we, we touched the user space breakage, and I think that uh, in case you only care about ASCII and you only care about uh, having some directory case insensitive, because you actually need this feature for a specific program, you could have an ASCII uh, file system. Uh, without strict mode in NLS and uh, only make that directory case insensitive. Uh, is there any other issues? I think the patches are on the mailing list. Uh. So the current implementation uh, is ext4, but the main part of it is the NLS changes. So I believe we are uh, one of the contributions of this work is that we are given a roadmap to be implemented in other file systems. And the first thing I, I think we could do is extend the XFS support to make it per directory and eventually support other encodings. Yeah, the other thing I'll add here is that uh, the current implementation only supports uh, changing the character set encoding uh, at makefs time. Uh, historically, we've actually added support uh, to EXD, various EXT4 features um, so that Tune2FS 
uh, would be able to sweep the file system and then update the encodings. Uh, there might be some interesting questions what, what one might do if you started with a UTF-8 file system and converted it to ASCII, and what do you do with all of the invalid characters? Um, and so maybe Tune2FS won't support that. Um, also, even though ext4 has sometimes supported uh, creation after the fact, um, uh, you know, modification of a file system after the fact to add some new file system features, uh, not all enterprise distros have supported that flexibility. Uh, mainly because their support desks don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I think <coughs> that uh, UTF-2 ASCII uh, should uh, be simpler, but the other way around, you, you risk dozens of name collisions. And yes. That's <laughs> <the hardest> one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I just grabbed some of the kernel source code, and it was interesting. might be worth pinging Jeff Layton. I didn't realize Jeff had attacked this, too. Um, so he created a WinU case file precisely because he was missing these functions. And he also, there's comments from another developer about, so the logical thing to do is if you had to deal with other uh, code pages like Unicode, right? Your N, uh, NTFS or SMB, whatever you're dealing with Unicode. Yeah, yeah so you, you've got a WCAR, so you walk through the string, and the logical thing would be to convert it to UTF-8, uppercase, then convert it back um, for some of these hashes, right? So and. But he describes why he doesn't do it, because he's missing these functions. Um, so when you case dot C in the kernel code might be an interesting example. But it's interesting, the most ugly code I was looking at, I think this helps with, is the, uh, the dentry revalidation stuff, where, where you're having to walk through. And we've got our own table, which is error prone, right? You shouldn't have NLS code inside a file system. You should have it, the, these uh, internationalization routines elsewhere. So you're converting one at a time. It's it's. It, this will be a lot better if, if it's possible, but when you case that C, I hadn't realized Jeff had attacked this uh, three or four years ago. Well, I'm not familiar with uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a related uh, issue here, which is as near as I can tell, uh, FSNLS has no maintainer at the moment, or certainly no upstream maintainer <laughs> that's active. Uh, and so the NLS changes are going to be going through the ext4 tree. Uh, one of the things that I will certainly do is try to make a good faith effort to test other NLS users that might possibly be impacted uh, to make sure that nothing breaks. Um, but it may very well be that there are some interesting additions that might, might want to be added to the NLS code to, for example, support wide encoding or whatnot, um, which is, you know, not currently there because, you know, Gabriel just did what he needed for his patch, which is perfectly fair. Um, but yeah, it should be noted that uh, you know we, we don't have anyone who is the NLS maintainer, uh, and I am not volunteering to be the NLS maintainer. Okay, <laughs> did you have any more slides, or are you? Uh, no, no. Um, yeah. The, just linking to the code, this is also in the cover letter, so you can look at the patches on <coughs> Linux EXE4. Uh, Got to thank a lot of people for this, so very quickly, the SGI guys who did this effort in the first place and all the UTF-8 implementation was hard, uh, heavy lifted by those guys. Thank you for the guys at LSFNN and the mailing list for uh, contributing and uh, Collabora and uh, Valve for uh, sponsoring the work. So thank you. Right. Any other questions? Right. So my question mainly is my question mainly just is how to imagine this going forward. Once this these routines were in, I think what I do is I throw away winucase.c, which has its own mapping table for wide characters. So basically Jeff created cut and paste, right? all of the wide character, uppercase, lowercase mappings. Mm -hmm. So you got two big arrays in this thing. And, uh, and then he tends to walk through character by character, converting the dentry from UTF-8 to a wide character, uppercasing it from the table, and converting it back. So I think all that code can kind of go away. So the other it thing is, what version? Well, I mean, that's, that's true, but at the same time, it's going to be the same thing that, that NTFS and 
so anybody that uses Unicode, it's going to be because Microsoft, right? UCS2, that encoding. I mean, yes, the version matters, and so we should pay attention. Right, right, because we only support, what you have? Was it V7? Or we have uh, the last is one, 10. Uh, we actually have 7, 8, 9, 10. So my theory is that if you're broken because you're using Windows Vista or a Mac from seven, six years ago instead of a Mac from two years ago, oh well. I mean, it's a heck of a lot better than right now because yeah. the mapping table has just yeah. holes. I, I'm just saying it might not be identical because you yeah. might be I agree. against an older version of Unicode, so well, my you may or may not care. My theory <laughs> is he, he pulled it out of a standard spec, yeah. my theory. Um, Independently of the actual version of Windows, the NTFS file system supports any any byte sequence which can be expressed in UTF-16. So you can have an old NT4 file system, and it will support, in a way, the latest UTF, uh, the latest Unicode uh, uh, character set, because it doesn't matter. So uh, that's the point. I didn't quite understand. Now, is it really? Um, does it really make sense to normalize on the file system, or shouldn't the file system rather also be like the NTFS file system, just be, you, you know, uh, um, allow any UTF-8 sequence which is um, valid, anyone. And you only need to normalize at the point where you really have to compare file names, and even NTFS allows any uh, Unicode sequence, so uh, whatever normalization you're using, both can be expressed, and so you even have two file names which look the same from the user perspective. That, that is correct. We only need to do normalization for uh, when we are looking and comparing. So we only do it for storing hashes in the disk, and the name is actually case preserving. So we, we can, uh, in theory, accept, in theory accept, uh, accept any sequence. Uh, what I am not sure is whether all the matchings of um, that all the equivalent sequences in an a NFD uh, fashion uh, are all would also match in an NFKD. Uh, I think Apple had problems with that, mm -hmm. so you might need to actually specify which normalization and which type of case fold you do and store it in the super block, so you can make sure you're always looking for it in the mm -hmm. same fashion. No, the, the it's right. name preserving. We always we only use normalization for comparison, mm -hmm. right. and in the disk, it's what the user created in first time. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's a good example. Um, like it seems like 99.9% .9 of it is the uh, the dentry revalidation stuff. So you, like a rename, so you don't rename a file on top of itself what you, that you mm -hmm. thought was supposed to be a new file, but ended up renaming on top of itself, or un, um, unlinking. Uh, making sure you're unlinking the file uh, that you're supposed to be. But so the, the dentry related routines were 99% of it, but there wasn't one other case. I was looking through my code. There's some places, mostly older security code, where they, uh, they have to uppercase the, uh, the username or password. Now, those are old security mechanisms, but that was the only other case I found that we care. So uh, there was a couple of months ago, there was a discussion uh, that Linus explained that actually uh, negative de-entries are kind of important. Also in the life cycle of, a, of, an, uh, of an idol in the cache, and, but also for performance. And so do you have uh, any thoughts about uh, returning the negative de-entries? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, negative entries, they are essential when you're uh, looking for a file that you don't, don't know the name, so you, you keep uh, looking and getting file not found all the time. And there is, this is essential for performance. Uh, what other file systems that uh, implement this, they have uh, two common approaches. The first one is don't add the entry at all. I believe this is the XFS approach. And they can do it because they go, when they go to inside the file system, they are caching some information there, so it's quickly retrieved. And the other approach is uh, just invalidate it later. 
the problem with this approach is that you have to be uh, careful in the rename path. You have to be careful in the when you are transforming it into a positive entry. It's completely doable, and I am currently working on that. I have patches. I know that they work, but I believe they still. I'm waiting for this stuff to go in, and then I can be pushing more. But uh, I completely un believe that it's totally doable to have negative entries. Mm -hmm. I had a previous proposal for negative entries where you'd store a different kind of negative entry that indicates that there is absolutely no file that would, uh, there is no, ab there is absolutely no equivalent sequence to that file. So it would be a harder, a stronger type of negative entry. But for this implementation, I believe it's no longer needed. So I'm dropping that. Uh, we keep using only one negative entry. Why can't we just treat them like positive entries? Positive entries, the first encoding is the one you take on the file format. Nobody can really alter the encoding after that. Why does it matter that we, when we change a dentry from negative to positive, it's actually the coding that was in the negative entry that we take? So assume you search at a file that is uppercase foo, and then you, you're gonna create a negative entry that is uppercase foo, and then you create a file, and then you actually create a file that is lowercase foo you're gonna find the negative entry, which is uppercase foo, yeah. but what you need to store is foo in lowercase. So you need to invalidate that entry and create another one or transform the entry. Right, but if you, if you create a file on the file system, uppercase foo, and then you try and use it as lowercase foo, and you try and write to it, everything works, but it's always up, it's al always stays as uppercase foo. So there's, I don't see a particular- A lot of people very much want case preserving, right? They don't want us mucking with So what you're telling me is first positive name is hard requirement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, any other questions? No? So thank you, I'll be around to discuss this.